What we've got here is a sheet of watercolour paper, quite a smallish size sheet. I'm going to measure the paper because I'm not quite sure exactly the size of it. I've got a ruler here, which has seen better days by the looks of it. So you're looking around sort of 7 inch by 5, which would be around sort of 12 centimetres by 17 centimetres. I'll zoom in a bit closer so you can see what's happening here. There it is. Now, it's warm today. I mean, we're looking, aren't we? It's about 27 degrees here. In this studio, the thermometer on the wall is telling me it's 33 degrees, so it's pretty hot in here. I've got studio <laughs> studio lights, so I'm going to do this. I'm just going to quickly mention materials. Um, I've got all my own range of paints. You can see that here, Matthew Palmer's uh, natural collection. Um, this one being the blue, of course. And there's all different colours, and we'll mention those as we go through. My favourite brushes are my Super Point, small, medium and large Super Point brush. And you can see why they're called Super Points, can't you? So I'm going to be using those, as well as some other bits and pieces. And over the next sort of 25 to 30 minutes, it's going to be a pretty quick demo today, folks. So do bear that in mind. I want to paint a bit of a snow scene to cool us down. This is going to be, it's going to, bit of Derbyshire, it's going to be your first Christmas card of 2023. It is. This is going to be a Christmas card, so do enjoy this because it's warm, it's going to cool us down. All the shops have got Christmas stuff in. Yeah, they have. So let's do a Christmas card. Why not? Why not? Let's just let's just enjoy the process. We're going to start off with a bit of masking tape. No sketching. Zero sketching today. A little bit closer in for you on the camera there. So a, a little watercolour greeting card. And of course, you can watch this back at any time as well. It's going to be a demo. This is not a workshop. If you want a workshop, then have a look on the website, all the W's watercolor.tv. And that's where you can get all of the, um, the workshops. Now, what's the difference between a demo and a workshop? Well, mainly it's due to the fact that I'm working quick here. I'm working at my speed. I want to get my fingernails into that tape there, don't I? So I'm working at my little pace here today. So I'm working at my pace. Um, whereas a workshop is holding your hand, giving you time to work. Now, if you've just tuned in, I'm creating a bit of modern art. It's all right, isn't it? So we put that on first. I want to get it a little bit closer in for you here. Um, we're going to paint a bit of a Christmassy theme sort of card. I've got some kitchen paper here. Pop that just on one side. I've got a fold that in half i've got an old english pound coin it's not that old this one's from 1980 something or other can't even see a date on that oh it's 2010. pop that in there little round coin don't use a new shape one will you christmas cards and greetings cards you want to paint them pretty quickly don't you so with a size 10 brush with a size 10 brush what i want to do is clean the brush really well and wet the top section of paper and I'm not concerned if a bit of paint creeps down the back I'm really not worried about that it's all part of the process here so that's just all wet there over to the palette I said we would mention the colors as we go through well that's exactly what we're going to do here first color I want to use here is actually um, let's use some natural orange actually. So I've got some natural orange. Now this is the colour you can see here. It's designed for like the autumn, great for autumn. Let me know in the comments um, if you would like me to do a workshop, a live virtual watercolour workshop, because it's it's approaching autumn now, which is nice because I love the autumn. Would you like me to do a virtual watercolour workshop where you can paint three, yes, three uh, watercolour greetings cards all on autumn themed scenes? So three autumn scenes, one workshop, smaller size like this, seven inch by five inch or whatever, which means they, they could be used as greetings cards. Let me know in the comments. Irene says yes. Let's get a bit of colour on here. We're going to twist this colour in. Make sure we get right close up to that masking tape. Beautiful. Clean the brush. That's natural orange by the way. Clean the brush and then we're going to go for some natural violet. Much stronger. Look at that. Oh, beautiful, deep, vibrant, natural violet. Great for bluebells. Great for your winter scenes. 
I've got a paint snow there to cool myself down because it's like the second summer. And we're going to twist this in at the top here. We'll make sure it mixes. Now when that mixes with the orange, the really good thing is it's going to go grey, which is great for this because I want to do like a snow capped mountain here. So get it all twisting through. I can put some little bits in the middle using a size 10 brush. Now I'm doing this at a pretty quick pace. Now again, if I was doing this for any other reason, if it was for a workshop, I would be doing it a lot slower than this. But because it's a demo, I feel like I want to whiz through. That's important. Now at that stage, I want to get this round coin here. I want to sort of pop the moon on just in that corner. There you go. Beautiful. A moonlit night. Now, as a result of me doing this, I want to jump back over to the palette. I want to take some grey, natural grey. A quick, speedy painting here. Natural grey, this colour here, is the most important one. All the products, every product is available on this website here, folks, all the W's, watercolour.tv. Click on the art shop, you can pick up these super point brushes and I want to add a bit of grey to this sky here. Just slightly overlapping the moon, I think would be a good idea. So that bit of grey comes in, which is really nice because what that grey will do is just give it a little bit of interest. And it'll Slightly creepy Halloween-y type moon. There's been some great full moons at the minute hanging around. There was that big sort of red blood moon the other day, wasn't there? You know, which was really nice. Just a damp brush here. I'm just going to mould the tip of it and just make sure that's not too. That'll soften the edge. Beautiful. So the moon is creeping behind the clouds. Let's remove the masking tape here with with care. Um, just peel it off. So quite a few of you are saying you'd like to do an autumn themed greetings card. I'm mean, not saying greetings card as such, I'm saying three small pictures. So it doesn't matter, just three paintings of some kind. That's a lovely atmospheric sky we painted just there. Now at this stage, we're going to pop another bit of tape across here. Remove the stickiness, which is no problem today. Wipe some moisture from the brow. Stick it on the son. Put it there. Pop that probably about here. So it's about halfway between the two. And that'll give us a chance to separate this to that. Love the colours, love the vibrancy of the colours there, which is really effective. What I want to do now is use this size 10 brush again and pop some shadows on with the violet. So we've got the violet right there on the tissue, a little bit on the tissue. And we're going to basically, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to paint. I'm going to put that across right there, clean the brush, got the tissue here to remove the excess water. Now again, I'm working quick. You don't have to work quick though, do you? Because you can pause this. You can watch it back, you can rewind it. The workshops aren't at this pace. The workshops are slow and steady, like me. Just make sure that completely fades away. This reminds me of a painting in Australia, not with the snow. But any, yeah. Many years ago I went to Australia and I did some watercolour painting there and uh, it was it was it was Christmas time and it was in the uh, Sydney area and it was absolutely baking to the point where you could barely do anything. It was it was too much. A little bit of grey goes in there as well. So that's the grey just going in. Now I'll put more shape in that once it's had a bit of time to dry. Just give it a bit of a soften. Beautiful. Now across this edge, I'm going to get close into that because I want to put some trees across there. So nice and close into that for you. We can do this now what we're going to do here change brushes yes we are we're going to change brushes and go for one of these these are matthew palmer tree and texture brushes there's different sizes as you can see here uh, i'll try and show you them there so you can see matthew palmer tree and texture brush these have been around for a long time the medium one is really good we're going to use the medium one right here and we're going to mix this color which is natural brown with some natural grey. So you've got quite a deep colour. I'm going to stick all those together. So quite a dark colour. But look at the brush. You can see how the brush is all nice and spiky. Again, all this stuff is available on the website. And remember, if you are a Watercolour TV member, you get 10% off. So do join. Check out all the video tutorials. Watercolour video on demand is what Watercolour TV is. Celebrating 15 years. We're going to stipple this colour. This browny grey. 
along that edge. Look how every little tap of the brush is giving you individual stipples. And surprisingly, the paper is still damp. That's a sign of good paper. Of course, it's my own brand of paper. Check out the art shop on the website for information of all the products. That's beautiful. I love that softness that it's created. It's a little bit darker on the screen than what it actually is in person. That's just one of the kind of hazards of working live um, with cameras in light. And you can never get it perfect. I'm going to go a little bit darker with that. So a bit more grey, just a touch more grey creeping in at the bottom there. So it's really dark. And then we'll come back to that once it's had a bit of time to dry, OK? So we'll zoom back a little bit here. What I want to do here is very gently remove the tape and I will come back to this and put some shadows and tonal work. I've not got there yet, stay with us, because I want to work down here next. Working at the bottom of the picture here is a great thing to do. Um, a little bit of a stream or something coming through might be quite nice. Let's paint a bit of a stream, shall we? Size 10 brush. No sketching, just straight in. We've got the grey here. That's the grey with the brown. That'll do. That'll be fine. We'll use that size 10 brush and we'll paint a bit of a stream or something like that. So we'll go down here and then we'll do a bit of a zigzag. The paint is dry on the paper at this stage. Like that. And then clean the brush. And then this time I'm going to pick up the violet. So I've got the violet, which is the same one I used from the sky. And we'll bring the violet from the grey, just a little bit, so the colours blend in. Stay with us. Look how nice and pointed that brush is. And then from the violet into the orange. We want the orange in there. So it's picking up some of the colours from the sky. And this will improve with age. Stay with us while we work our way through the picture. You've got to stick with it in watercolours, well any medium really. And I'll put that brush away and pick up the small one actually, this one's the, the favourite one, this is the small super point or a size 6 brush, but a very pointy brush is what I've got here. Um, back to the grey, this is just natural grey, which is a shadow colour, it's not Payne's grey, it's not neutral tint, this is its own grey, very important colour. And what I want to do here is get really close in and make these edges look a little bit more realistic, if you like. We shall be doing more of this later on as we progress through the workshop, through the demo, should I say. We can also start to add a few little bits of ripples. Now, I want to put lots of light in this picture as well once we, once we progress. So we're starting to get some reflection, some ripple, some movement in the water. Stay with us, stay with us. These little points, these little points are quite key to what we're doing. So we get the little points in. Like so sharpen up those edges where possible. And those little points will turn into the snowy area. So stay with us while we do this, okay? Simple, quick watercolour painting. We've been doing this for probably around sort of 15 minutes. I don't know, which is a rough guess. Just going to darken the bottom here. And then we'll leave that and we'll come back to the mountains. Up top, we're going to put the shadows in the mountains. I'm using the size 6 brush here. Beautiful. Um, what we're going to do here is use the violet. The same violet from the sky. Natural violet. This is the colour. Very unique colours, these. Designed to replicate nature. What I want to do is get some shadows and separation into this. Now, yes, we've got the moon, so we'll bring that into consideration shortly. But at this stage... I want to go up I want to come down here like that yeah but where's your light coming from did you wet it dry paper is what we've got there just use a bit of water is it me or is it moist bring that in and then we'll just bring a little bit of look how that's created separation that's not a light thing that is all to do with separation of colours. It's all to do with separation of colour. That's what that is all about. Now, if you like my style of painting, my 
kind of teaching, and relaxed, easy going, hopefully, then that's when you need to be taking part in a workshop. We have them happening pretty much every single weekend. The one coming up this weekend as I'm live here on Facebook and on YouTube on the 7th of September 2023 is this one you can see on your screen now. The 10th of September, we're going to paint colourful blue tits. Yes, we're painting tits on a bird feeder. How good is that? You can watch it live or at any time. You can't go wrong, so do make sure you go back it's a £10 workshop from anywhere in the world you can take part in it. Make sure you get yourself booked in. The link's in the description below. Let's put some shadows down here while that dries at the top. We'll come back a bit. Come back a bit. A little bit. There we go. We'll leave that there. Still using the violet. I'm going to pop some shadows to make this snow look a bit more as though it's got some shape to it. So we'll get a few of these in. A few little shadows here and there. Now remember, this is meant to be a Christmas card or greetings card or something like that. So... The idea is that you don't want to be spending a mass amount of time on it necessarily. But hopefully you can see that I'm moulding the shadows here. Clean brush, a couple of taps. Beautiful. And then we'll swing over to this side. Do the same. It'll grow on you in this picture. Clean brush, a couple of taps, size 6 brush or small super point, which is my own version of a size 6 brush, my own brand if you like. Look how nice that is. Look how we've got shape. We have shape, don't we, already. I want to go a bit darker on the mountains now, just a little bit. So let's jump back to the palette here. We've got the grey, which I'm just going to pick up a little bit thinner. I don't want it to be too strong necessarily. But it's grey is the darker version of the... I mean, if you look around the studio where I'm sat here, my little watercolour world. Look how dark it is over there. Look how dark it is under my chin. Look how dark it is down here between the fingers. Look at the shadows between the fingers. It's grey. Everything's grey. We need grey. It's important. You need grey in your life. Ask John Major, he knows. For some reason they were famous for being grey, weren't they? Oh, well, it was all about. Who? Who's he then? Who does he play for? Let's bring that down. making a few little extra shadowy things here and there. The moonlight's catching the tops and random bits here and there. It doesn't really matter. I'm not worried. I am. I'm not worried about where the uh, where the light is. Yeah, but where's your light coming from? Is it me or is it moist? The heat's making me hysterical now. Let's just get a bit of softening in. Can't go wrong. Bring it in. You've ruined it. Bring it in. And just a little bit of water. And look how that's given that shape. It's given it texture, it's given it contour. And back to the grey one more time. Just make sure that things are really dark in here. We're going to put some detail in. Stay with us while we finish this thing off. Put some more trees, I think, as well, and some reflections in the water and all sorts of little random things would be quite nice to do here. I think a few shadows would be nice as well. If I grab some of that uh, violet, you know, because you've got your moonlight up there. Let's put some cast shadows from these trees here. Look at them, beautiful. Kind of sweeping across the old landscape there. And uh, that's really effective. Probably just get a few little horizontal lines around there with the water as well. More work on the water to come. Anticipation is half the fun. So quite a loose painting. It's because I'm working it at speed. This is what you call a speed painting. Which every time I say speed painting, it reminds me of speed dating. That's the thing, speed dating. I was brought up in a very tiny village, you can probably tell, in Derbyshire. And I remember when speed dating was a thing. <laughs> they had a speed dating night. It was uh, for charity. And... Uh, I booked into it. I was a single guy back then, you know. I booked, I booked into it, and there were only me and one other person turned up, and there would, and there were two blokes. <laughs> yeah, long story that. Something I'd rather forget about. Only joking. There were three blokes. Right. There it is. There it is. Let's put a bit of reflection in. Now, for this, I want to be quite deep grey, and brown, natural brown. 
So mix grey and brown together, you get really strong, deep colour on the tissue. Get your fingers in. Look at that. Splay your bristles. And then I'm going to pop a little bit of uh, what we're going to use here. Something. I'm going to pop a straight edge. There you go. I've got a plastic card there, just on that edge. I want to come down and put some reflections in on these areas. I want to create depth in the water. And lines make depth instant. Has anybody got these brushes, these super point brushes? What about the tree brushes? Look how nice that is. It just makes the water have a drop to it. I'm also going to use this same colour. Now I know it's quite dark, but on the tissue there, look at this piece of tissue here. I found that in the car park. I can make use of that. I'm going to do dry brush. What? Dry brush. What's one of them? Opposite of a wet brush. And we're going to add some little bits of rocky stuff coming out the tops of the mountains. Look at that beautiful little bit of rock formation. Just if I get close in, because we can do that, can't we? The future. Can zoom in. Just a little bit of a sort of rocky edge effect here. And what it does, it gives that little bit of an impression of the rocks poking out the tops. You've all seen it before. On the mountain, a little bit of texture added to it. Skim the surface. I'm using the side of the brush for this. And look how it makes the mountains look like what, that little bit more realistic than what they currently are. It just gives a bit of earth, bit of rock formation. It's really effective. And then down here in this area, we could have a similar thing. Now, it wouldn't be rocks, obviously, there. Well, it might be, but I think a nice dark edge to the rocky formation would be quite quite effective so you can see there just how effective it is giving texture to it sort of skimming the surface of your paper a little bit it's really nice to see come back a little bit with the camera here just a touch bring a little bit in the water as well so this is this is really quite dark stuff now look. you see i'm putting little little dark bits just almost that little reflections little bits of ripples in the water if I go for a really dark green, I've got my own green paint here. I've got I've got um, this one, a natural green it's called. And it's like a fine green. It's designed to look like an actual pine colour. And I'm gonna use this brush, which is probably my favourite one of all. This is a this is a detail brush on steroids, Matthew Palmer's branch and detail brush. There it is. I'm going to use that with this dark green, this colour here. And probably mix a little bit of grey in with it, maybe. We've got this lovely dark green. But look at the brush, beautiful pointy brush there. Really nice. It loads the reservoir up, you see, which makes quite a nice effect. And I just think we could just to finish this little miniature off. Put the little... Classic. Look how lovely that brush is to use. It's like using a pen. Beautiful, beautiful thing. Get the brush tilted a bit there. And just bring it up. So you get that nice little sort of structure of pine tree. And probably add, you know, a couple of these. Make it a little bit thicker in the middle. Uh, maybe another one just here. I think three would be a good, a good number here. So we'll get three of those in. And the idea is that the large head of the brush holds the colour that feeds the tip. So you're not forever dunking it in your palette like you do with a normal rigger, for those people that know what I mean by that. Um, and this is just a great way of adding a bit more clarity to it. But that's quite a nice little little scene there. I mean, you've got a bit of stress in life. I'm not saying I have, but you know, if you have, there's no better escapism than doing something like this. It really... 
I don't know, just kind of lifts the old mood a little bit and brightens up your day. And I'm just going to brighten that up a bit so we can see those colours a bit better. But I think that's probably probably OK there. Just a bit of a reflection of those trees. That one certainly. Escape the real world by doing some watercolour painting or some, some kind of artwork. Really effective. That same brush would be really nice for doing some detail work. So if I use the brush with some browns and greys and do some little, I don't know, maybe like a little, a little bit of foreground scale, here it goes. Get the little rustic fence posts in. Down there, it just helps to give scale. Come back a bit with the camera. Zoom out to touch, there we go. Maybe on this side we could do a similar thing. Maybe that one could be a gate. I've just wiped the colour out of the brush on the tissue, just to rough it up a little bit on the bottom of that. So it just gives the impression of a little bit of a railing or something like that. And if I'm very dry with the brush, I could create some depth here. Do like a zigzag that. So we're very subtle with the silent bee. What? Footpath, yeah, I'm just like sort of weaving through. It just helps to give a bit of depth, don't it? A little bit of dry brush in there. You've got to get your classic bird over the moon. Beautiful. And darken the bottom of that. And then just while that has a moment to dry, because I want to put some finishing touches on this. But that's made a nice picture. I want some light in the picture, and for this I'm going to use a craft knife, but just while it's drying off, just one more time to mention folks, if you like me, please do, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you subscribe, cha-ching, hit the notification bell, makes a difference, the YouTube channel's got around 80,000 subscribers, do make sure that you subscribe and get that notification bell if you've not already, also take a look at the website, all the W's watercolour.tv, because loads of cool stuff on there. Become a member of Watercolour TV, the original and best art video on demand website. Lots of exciting stuff. And again, the big news is, let me show you the website while that dries for a minute and then we'll put the finishing touches on. Here it is, all the W's, watercolour.tv. And if you go to the top of the screen, first of all, flashing away, top right of your screen is the upcoming virtual workshop. These are £10. This is the one we're doing because I'm live here today. 10th of September, paint colourful blue tits on a bird feeder, watch it live or at any time. And the great thing about these as well is if you go to the workshop menu and come down to previous, which is right there, you can actually go back and purchase any of the previous 150 plus. This is the one we've just done last weekend. It was the harvest time landscape beautiful beautiful project so they're all available for you to buy keep and enjoy and that's a great thing about this it really is a nice little thing that you can do so let's just use a craft knife here a very sharp knife we've got a few of these some are sharper than others sharper the better that's a good one there by the looks of it i'm going to use this we'll get close in we're going to lighten things up a little bit here we're going to scrape away some light in the water Horizontal scratching, what a difference it makes on a snow scene. Reflect the moon a little bit as well. Not only is it giving an effect of a sparkle to the water, but also it's giving that reflection of moonlight. You could do a little bit of scratching around the base of the trees as well. A little bit of a dig and flick type thing. Takes the harshness away. If you use the side of it, you can even scratch away some extra. Let me get close into that for you. You can scratch away some texture in the mountains to make it look brighter as well. So I'm using the side of the knife here, obviously being very careful. Mr. Palmer's not responsible for cut fingers or anything. But you can get you on, you know. Get your, get your permission from your parents first. There you go. And that makes a nice effect. A little bit of scraping away on the trees. A dusting for Justin, a little bit of wintry stuff on there is quite nice. 
Went for a quick watercolour. I think that has made a lovely little painting there. Come back with the, with the camera. Got a little mount here. Pop it on, position it. It's a little bit small, but it yeah, kind of works. And uh, there we have a finished mountain scape. Great for your Christmas cards in watercolour. Beautiful, enjoyed that. Take the tape away. I always think it's nice to have a nice crisp clean edge in these paintings. Wasn't taxing, wasn't difficult, just easy going, relaxing, stress free. Thanks for watching folks.